This VizCast investigates the motion of an object which is thrown. Please pause the video and read through the question carefully. Now that you've done that, hopefully you realize that this is a question which investigates two-dimensional motion. Importantly, it's also motion with a constant acceleration where the x component is zero and the y component has a magnitude of that of gravity. Let's draw a diagram. We know the initial position of the package, x naught, which is three meters away from a building, the final horizontal position of the package. We also know that the package is being thrown through a window, which is 4.2 meters above the ground. That's the final vertical position of the package. Importantly, the package is also located at an initial y position, which is 1.5 meters above the ground. So it's vertical displacement is equal to 2.7 meters. Thinking about how this will be thrown, we're going to be launching the object at some unknown velocity. That's what we want to find. We also want to find at what angle we have to throw it. They're the two quantities we're looking to solve for, the speed and the angle that it's thrown, such that the package just barely clears the window sill. So that means that the trajectory is such that at the top, a final vertical velocity of zero. That's what it means to be barely clearing the window sill, just getting inside. So this is a, a two-dimensional problem. So let's we're going to use our constant acceleration equations of motion. We know that the final velocity is zero, so the final velocity squared is equal to the initial velocity squared plus two times the acceleration times y minus y naught. And here I've just labeled those final initial velocities with a subscript y to indicate this is the vertical motion. Let's call that equation one. It's going to give us V0Y, and V0Y is the component of the initial velocity in the vertical direction over here. We could also write down that the horizontal displacement, X minus X0, is the horizontal velocity V0 X times T plus a half times the acceleration in the X direction times T squared. That acceleration, of course, is zero, so Looking at this equation, um, we know x minus x naught. We could use it to find the horizontal component of the initial velocity. However, we don't know t. We do know that the vertical motion is going to constrain the time. That is, the final vertical velocity vy must be equal to the initial vertical velocity v naught y plus the acceleration times time. We now have three equations and we have three unknowns. So we can solve for v naught x, v naught y, and for time through some combination of those equations. So that's our strategy. Let's go through our evaluation step. Equation one is probably the easiest one to use because we can get a numerical value for v naught uh, y straight away. Rewriting that v naught y would be equal to the square root of uh, the final velocity squared minus two times the acceleration in the y component times y minus y naught. And if we put in the numbers we know, final velocity is zero. We've got the acceleration, which is gonna be given by the minus 9.8. So that means that we can write down that the acceleration here is minus 9.8, but two negatives multiply together make a positive. And y minus y naught we also have is 2.7 meters. So putting those numbers together in our calculator, we will evaluate that to be 7.275 meters per second. So that's one component of the velocity. Now, since we have v naught y, we've just evaluated that, and we know the final velocity was zero, we can actually solve equation three. So that was equation one that we solved. Equation three, uh, we want to find the time, so we can write down that the time uh, is equal to uh, the final velocity minus the initial velocity divided by the acceleration. Uh, the final velocity in the vertical direction was zero. The initial velocity in the vertical direction that we just found out. And then we divide by the acceleration, which is minus 9.8. And we evaluate that to give us a time of 0 0.742 seconds. So this is the time it takes for the object to come to rest in the vertical direction as it's thrown up. Okay, once we've got t, then we can use that to solve equation two. Uh, so we're looking to find v naught x. Let's just rearrange that uh, equation. X component of the initial velocity is gonna be given by displacement x minus x naught divided by the time. So we can work that out to be 4.04 meters per second. Okay, we're almost there. 
So all I'm going to do now is just remember that in order to try and find the magnitude of that hypotenuse, V0 X, V0 Y, this is V0, therefore V0 is given by the sum of the squares, square rooted, which is just Pythagoras, so we can then put those numbers into our calculator and take the square root to give us 8.323 meters per second. We found the initial velocity, we need to find the angle of course, and once again we can go back to our geometry. Um, the theta is equal to the inverse sine of v naught y over v naught, which is uh, 60.9 degrees, so 61 degrees, and of course we've got to check here that uh, it's also equal to the inverse cosine of v naught x over v naught. If we take that, uh, we can check, and that will also return 61 degrees. So it's consistent. So we've found the angle, and we've found the initial velocity. So on our assessment stage, we also should check uh, the units. So certainly for the angle, that's easy. The What's inside the inverse sine or inverse cosine function should be a unitless ratio. That makes sense. Uh, we can also check that the units for our velocity here we've got the acceleration meters per second squared multiplied by meters, all square rooted, so that's going to give us meters per second. So units are good. So we've kind of done a magnitude check of the components of the velocities, because if we had one of those magnitudes uh, incorrect, then there's no way that these two angles would be the same. So we've already done a magnitude check, which is great. What about behavior? So for this behavior check, what I want to do uh, is consider what happens if I change one thing about the problem, and that being um, how far away I am from the building. So rather than moving how far I am away, because we can do this, what I want to think about actually is changing the position of the building. So the window is still at the same height, but now it's further away. And the question we're going to ask ourselves is, what does that mean for V0, and what does it mean for the angle? What has to change? And does that change reflect um, in, the, uh, in the equations that we've got here? So hopefully you realize that uh, since the window is at the same height, that actually means that the vertical component of the velocity has to be fixed, because that sets the free fall time. So V naught Y is going to be a constant for the window height. Um, that also means that T is going to be a constant as well. And we can get that by looking at equation 3. So we can see here that if v naught y is fixed and the final velocity is 0, and we know the acceleration of gravity, then t is also fixed. So we've got the, a fixed time in order for the um, object to get to this final position here. So what does that mean? It means that the component of the velocity v naught x has to be larger. We've increased the horizontal displacement, and to cover that distance in the fixed time, we must increase the component of the velocity. In order to increase the horizontal component of the velocity, but keep the vertical component of the velocity fixed, that also means that we're going to have to both increase v naught, so v naught goes up, and my angle theta goes down. So what we're going to do now is look at equation two. Equation two tells us if the time is fixed, then uh, if I increase x minus x naught, then, then my horizontal component of velocity must increase. So that's consistent. Um, whereabouts does the angle come in? How do we find that, uh, that the angle gets smaller? We have to look down uh, the bottom here where we've got expressions for the angle. So for the sine function, uh, the argument in the sine function decreases. So that uh, v naught y over v decreases. Uh, that means the angle must decrease as well if you know how your trig functions behave. So that's a little bit extra on the behavioral step, uh, but it does allow you to really explore the physics.